in my hands an article from CNN on this economic buzzword that is being floated around called immaculate disinflation. So if you haven't heard this, let me explain the term because what it means is actually more relevant to you and your pocketbook and your lifestyle than the term itself. The term is 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 now being used to describe a scenario where inflation cools without causing a spike in unemployment. Now, let's go back for a second to explain that. Immaculate as in it's a miracle, right? Oh, disinflation is going to happen without a lot of pain. That's the theory here, okay? So let's go back to Jerome Powell and his very public comments all over the news. You can go find them uh, all the way back to 21, 22, when the economy was just heating up like crazy and we saw inflation take off and roar and roar and roar and stay there and stay there and stay there. And so he said, look, uh, we've got to raise interest rates because in doing so, we will cool inflation and understand that a part of this process is there's going to be some pain in the form of unemployment. And he came out and said, I want to see unemployment jump up. And we've been hovering at a historically low unemployment rate for quite some time in the threes. And so he said, look, we may see it get to 5%, uh, 6% unemployment. That's painful, but it is a necessary outcome that will be tied to our strategies and efforts to lower inflation. Okay. So that's what he's been saying. Well, so that hasn't happened. The jobs report just came out recently. And again, very, very sturdy job market. Still more jobs available than people who are unemployed. So that's where we sit. So where are we at on inflation? Has inflation cooled? Yes. Has it cooled enough? No, not in my opinion. Uh, inflation has cooled from a peak of 9.1% in June of 2022 to 3.2% in July of this year. So inflation was at 9.1%, summer 22, and summer 23, 3.2%. So that is good news. Yet, if we look at the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate fell from 3.6% in June of 22 to 3.5% of 23. The current rate is 3.8% unemployment. So again, you know, very historically low numbers, very, very low. So while inflation has cooled, the job market hasn't gotten worse. Unemployment has not spiked. All right. So some economists have floated this phrase out that, oh, we're going to have, and sometimes you hear in the media say soft landing. Well, is that true? Well, the Fed officials themselves aren't celebrating, uh, and they won't until they see inflation hit the central bank's 2% target. And Jerome Powell has been very clear wants to see inflation drop to 2%. That's the target, and stay there. So getting there without a spike in unemployment would be a miracle in Jerome Powell's eyes. Even President Joe Biden's top economic advisor, uh, Jared Bernstein, expressed kept skepticism about this. So he said, I wouldn't call this disinflation immaculate. There is a good question as to what's around the corner at the last mile, and I think that's true. So that brings us to where we sit today. Okay. So stock market turned down for the year. If you look across the total year, down. Treasury yields up. A lot of signs now that a recession is, in fact, very possible in 2024. I'm going to tell you, when companies hear the R word, they start laying people off. We saw mass layoffs in technology uh, earlier this year, in the fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter of last year. And, and so then it gets painful. We also have student loan payments back online. They're due as of October 1. We are seeing signs that real estate, Housing prices continue to inch up. We are approaching 8% on the mortgage, on a 30-year mortgage. 
We have seen signs like Airbnb having a hard time putting renters in homes. A lot of people took that Fed money, that money that was flying around in the form of unemployment, PPP loans, a lot of liquid in the economy from the Fed. And what'd they do? Well, they watched too many Instagram videos and they went and bought real estate, a home with zero down and said, ah, I'll just turn it into an Airbnb. I'll get rich. And now Airbnb's numbers, not mine. There's a glut of homes that are available and people aren't renting. Uh-oh, what does that mean? It means people have two mortgage payments or they've got rent payment plus a mortgage payment and no one's renting. Maybe those same very people, I don't know, possible, got to start paying the student loan back. Haven't paid it off in two or three years. Uh-oh, we got a cash crunch. And then with a recession potentially looming, layoffs happen. What happens next? Uh-oh, people are filing bankruptcy. The housing market flooded with foreclosures. Uh-oh. So, immaculate disinflation? I think this is preposterous. I don't know who comes up with this stuff. Now, if you're a football fan, you know about the immaculate reception. Franco Harris, the Pittsburgh Steelers. One of the great miracle catches of all time. Immaculate reception? Yes, Nathan. I mean, but not immaculate disinflation. This is nonsense. This is the kind of stuff these headlines lull people into a false sense of security. And when I say security, I really say security quotes. Their form of security is, I'm secure to keep on spending on the credit card. I'm secure to keep living on paycheck to paycheck mentality. I buy what I want to buy when I want to buy it. Now figure it out next month. And I'm telling you folks, that's a problem. So yes, it's a buzzword, but I don't think we're going to have that right now. Everything's rolling along, but the disinflation isn't happening fast enough for Jerome Powell because he's already signaled they're going to raise rates more. So, those rates aren't going to drop anytime soon. If you want to know what the outlook is on housing mortgage rates, look at the Treasury yield. There's your sign. If it goes up, so do mortgage rates. So pay attention to this stuff. And don't assume that Joe or Donald are going to bail you out. They're not. In a recession, what companies do is they cut costs. And the number one cost that companies have is employees which means they will cut employees. So I'm sitting there going, if I want to be recession proof, I got to have some cash. I got to lower my expenses. So if I have to scrap by with two or three part-time jobs while I'm looking for the next full-time job, that I'm not relying on any kind of bailout. I'm not relying on a juiced up unemployment benefit because if we have mass layoffs in the form of a, serious recession in 2024 and beyond, I don't think you're going to see what we saw during COVID where you saw juiced up unemployment benefits coming from the federal government and the state. I don't think the government's going to do that again. Too much liquid. It was abused. People didn't want to go back to work. We're still recovering from it. So I tell you all that to say, when you read headlines like this, don't get lulled into a false sense of safety. You do the interpretation you read the tea leaves, listen to what I'm telling you, and shore yourself up for a rainy day. This is The Ken Coleman Show.